Welcome to Anderson TV. I am Peter Honoré. And I'm Mick Taylor. And uh, we're going to have a look at these new Vela PRS guitars. Now, uh, first question I have, is it Vela? Is it Vela? Vela? Or Vela? Or Vela? Depends where you come from, I think. If you're from Denmark like me, it's probably Vela. Yeah. I think the guy, the guy in America who's doing the PRS video, very good yeah. video you should watch as well. Yeah. Uh, he says Vela. Anyway, Vela. whatever. Well, let's say, let's... let's say Vela, because then we at least know what we're talking about. <laughs> anyway, moving anyway. on. Okay, so why are these interesting? PRS's first uh, ever offset design. Offset means it's kind of take a normal guitar and do that with it, as the Jazzmaster was. Um, and as you can see, it's just a kind of a more streamlined version of uh, the PRS body shape. It's mm. uh, an American-made guitar. So it's part of the S2 series, and it is a uh, slab mahogany body with this kind of um, contour rather than a fancy ass uh, carved top like you would yeah, expect. It's pretty, it's pretty cool with that contour, isn't it? It looks, if you can see that on the on the video, how it's sort of carved all the way around here. That looks really cool. Was it mahogany neck as well? Yeah, it's called a bevel cut. A bevel cut. Peter, that That's was, that was the word I was looking for. That was the, yeah. And then you found it because yeah. what I said, then you <laughs> it came out, it came to you. So that's great. And uh, it's, a, it's a mahogany neck. It's got rosewood fingerboards. It, it's got the dots inlay. These two have got dots, but you can get the birds as well in here. And um, they've got the, um, they've got the humbugger here, S2 humbugger. And they got a single coil uh, here, and this is a coil tap. So when you pull this guy, that'll split the back humbugger here. Interestingly, the neck pickup's but, called a D-type, which yes. I assume, is I don't it, know, it, but I assume it means d armand because they look a bit like the old d armand They do, don't they? With it's, the huge... Yeah. It, it looks really cool. I, li I like I like that, that pickup. And plus it sounds really, really nice as well. It's got the locking tuners up the top. Yeah, I mean, I think the whole, the whole point of this um, guitar is that there is a view of PRS guitars among certain sections that they're very kind of fancy, beautiful, collectible, all yeah. those things guitars. Yeah. And I think PRS has always struggled to have like a working guitar that's just there for really simple... Because um, it is very simple. I'm, tr I'm trying it... to avoid using the word cool, but uh, uh, there's no <laughs> way around it. <laughs> no, I think it's, a, it's... I think you said, uh, well, when you say a working man's guitar, yeah, you know, because it is something that you can take out and you can you can take it on the road and you can just bang it about. Mm. You know, there's not much. Fa it's a piece of wood with a piece of wood on it, basically, and some metal, <laughs> little metal bits in the middle. You know, but you know what I mean. That and that's what we need. We don't want too many things that can break. You know. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, end of the uh, <laughs> lesson on the history of on the history of guitars. guitars. <laughs> it's a wood, piece of wood with a piece of wood on it. Now, I have got a story where I am doing. I was doing a tour in Germany last year, and I. We've got this stage, massive stage, and I am on the left side of this. Just and there's a big curtain, and it, it comes past every time. You know, we play a little bit, and then the curtains come past. So, I've got a Les Paul 335, uh, Duesenberg star player, a Strat, a couple of Martins in there, and this curtain because the wind. They've opened the doors out in it. It drags. It takes my guitar rack, and all of them goes onto the floor, and nothing broke. Because that, and that's what you want. You see what I mean? There was a few things in dark, you know, and, mm -hmm. and probably my most precious one is my gold top, which is a, a classic '95, I think it is, and it's lovely. But even that, it's had a few things in it on the back. But that's what you want. You want something you can take on the road, and s when stuff like that happens, mm. you can't be too precious about it, you mm. know. And if you and had a private reserve PRS in that rack, yeah, that's I, never. I would. I, I was like, oh, whatever. You can't really. And for those of those of us who don't do massive tours in huge arenas, um, <laughs> you'd, you'd be equally happy leaning it up against your amp in a pub. But I mean, but that's what I'm saying is you get the drunk guy in the pub and he yeah, first yeah, yeah. he sm smacks into the microphone stand so your tooth oh. bit gets you know like I've had to happen to me and then he falls into your guitar you know, and you can't be too precious about these things and I think that's where that's where these guitars are great because they. Yeah, and the, and the price point reflects that as well. They're sort yeah. of, they're not full on American PR. They are made in America, but they're not full on American PRS prices, and they're certainly not SE prices. So they they kind of sit in the middle. Yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Let's have a listen. They're the same guitar. They're exactly the yeah. same, just different finishes. Yeah, you can get different finishes. There's a white as well, as far as a, a white one. A white one. Um, but they 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 look really cool, and they they're really well done. I'm looking at them, and you know they you you can get up here, 
It's easy to get up to the dusty area. There important. is no money up no. there, mate. No. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's, Pete's one of the few guitar players I know who actually gets paid money for playing the guitar. When I'm and, lucky. Uh, you know. Yeah. And but I, you don't get paid for playing up there. No, never. You get paid for playing down the, here. I think this is the bit yeah, where, that's where, where the, the money, money is. is. That, right, this bit there here. There it is. If you're lucky. Yeah. If you're lucky, this bit. Otherwise, it's sort of here. This? Really. Unless you put a capo on, of course. And then yeah. there's a little bit up here. Yeah. And a wire costs extra, man, I tell you. Can't even do it. Anyway. Anywho. Let's, let's move on. Yeah. Okay, um, so they're exactly the same. Uh, I'm plugged into the Tone King Sky King. Mm. Pete's plugged into the Fender uh, Deluxe Reverb, which actually has a very nice blue paisley uh, floral it finish on it. It's quite sexy, that one. Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Right, um, let's, um, let's hear your neck pickup. Okay. I'm just going to take all of this stuff off, so we do a clean, clean tone first. I'll tell you what's interesting about that. Yeah. I can hear lots of sizzle and presence and high end off yes. that pickup, which you would never get off a normal humbucker. It's a single coil, but uh, that's a very different sound for PRS, straight off the bat. Yeah. It's a nice, uh, almost like a funky. Um, the Pete's got a T-Rex uh, Tune Master on his pedal board, and that's got a buffer in it, but it's not turned on at the moment. Uh, actually, I think it might be turned on a little bit. Let me turn it. Just so I thought, yeah, I thought that's a very yeah. So that's my fault. That's what. <laughs> but actually, it just goes to show when you do plug into a pedal board uh, that you know you, it's great to have some some sort of yeah. a buffer in it. It well, does really help a lot. This was not even turned up. You know, it's, like, it's interesting because I thought that was all the sizzle and, and sheen on the top of the pickup, but actually. But you could. You could yeah, but it's you still gone. Play again. Then. Yeah. So, yeah, that neck pickup, it's kind of very open and um, clear sounding. It, 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 if I stick some uh, tremolo and some lo-fi type reverb on here, it yep. kind of... Like a, it's not really like a single coil. It's not like a, like a strat single coil. Is it the first? The, the, no, it feels. Uh, it's a little bit different. Isn't no, it? it's kind of more like um. A strat would be kind of, well, different. <laughs> less <laughs> yeah, we, it less, would be. Yeah. Less we... A little bit. There's definitely more of a kind of a more presency. And obviously with the rest of the guitar being made of different stuff. Interesting, yeah. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I tell you what else I think I'm hearing. It's uh, a top loading bridge, not a through body bridge. Yeah. And that definitely, that's... I mean, if you, if you think about an older Squire or a um, Telly that's got a top loader rather than a uh, through. Yeah, um, it's got it this... definitely. If you, I don't know if you can see here, but the, the string sort of goes in here and gets, you know what I mean? It gets in yeah. and you you pull them up and it gets caught into the bridge here, which then sits on top of the the guitar. It doesn't go through there, so it's. it's and a, I guess everybody looking at the screen at this point is yelling, "What about intonation?" Yes. Because you've only got two uh, uh, two brass saddles there, but if I know PRS, that will be pretty well perfectly intonated. Yeah, yeah. But they'll be adjusted to the optimum. Angles. They're also uh, you've got two screws on each one, so you can change the angle. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably they've probably designed it like that, so they know, you know they know what they're doing. Let's not you know beat them on the bush. Yeah, which might sound like a flippant comment, but um, if I know Paul and I do know Paul, um, <laughs> <laughs> he, he they don't mess around when they design things. No.
Ole. Interesting. So uh, Pete's using a combination of uh, MXR Il Torino Overdrive and the uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb. Yeah. And that's a pretty aggressive kind of... It's, yeah, the Il Torino has got, this is set on the Overdrive setting, and it's got boost setting as well on here. Okay. Um, which is more like this, on the same. A little bit, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can really hear the speaker in that amp. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, mommy, mommy, mommy. Yeah. so I got a, a slightly softer sounding overdrive. It's um, uh, J Rocket Tim Pierce going into the Tone King Sky King. Should sound a, a little rounder and smooth. Well, let's see. <laughs> Amazing how even though we've got two of the same guitars here and we're doing the same thing, how much pedals and amps makes, you know what I mean? It's it's such a huge difference, especially in this room. It might be a bit more difficult for you to hear when we're micing it up, but if you're listening on, you know, put your headphones on, you can hear it better. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's completely different. These two, you know, even though we're kind of playing the same sort of thing. Mm. It just makes such a big difference of which pedal you use and which amp and what speakers in the amp and tubes and you know. Yeah. I tell you what I will do is just run through the yeah. pickup pickup selections just on a clean sound just yeah, to give a it. quick. Um, so this is the bridge humbucker. <laughs> this is the bridge humbucker tapped. Uh, bridge and neck pickups the middle middle selection <laughs> Go on Prince <laughs> and the neck humbucker you can't do anything to that because it's a single coil so this is It's nice and it's nice and fat that front pickup, isn't it? That neck pickup. That's I like that. Let me just try that with the EP booster just to see. Those, these two amps are very different as well, aren't they? Just a little bit of spank. This is a great pickup, this one. I like this. I like this a lot. Yeah. Okay, so there we are. New yeah. PRS S2 Vela guitars. Vela. We'll see you soon on Anderson's TV.